Hi everyone and welcome to Revised Chemistry with Mr B. In this video I'm going to be telling you the difference between an endothermic and an exothermic reaction and how we can tell if we've got an endothermic or exothermic reaction by looking at a set of results. First of all, what is an exothermic reaction? Well, an exothermic reaction gives out heat energy to the surroundings. So make sure you remember this definition. Think of it like this, you go out of an exit and anything to do with heat has the word therm in it. So a thermos flask keeps a drink warm, thermal clothes keep your body warm. So exo and therm is giving out heat energy. So this means the surroundings around that reaction is going to get warmer. So if we were to put a thermometer into the solution, the reading on the thermometer would increase as the chemicals inside that solution are giving out heat energy. An endothermic reaction takes in heat energy from the surroundings. So think about going into a building, you would go into an entrance. So endo means going in, and once again, therm is to do with heat. So endothermic means taking in heat energy from the surroundings. So this time the surroundings will get cooler. So if you were to put a thermometer into an endothermic reaction as it's happening, you would see the readings on the thermometer start to decrease. You'll need a selection of different reactants. I'm choosing to react together magnesium with hydrochloric acid, ammonium chloride with water, sodium hydrogen carbonate with citric acid, iron filings with copper sulfate, and sodium thiosulfate with water. You also need a test tube rack, some boiling tubes, a thermometer, spatula, and measuring cylinder. And equipment like this, along with the chemicals that I will be using, can all be ordered from the Philip Harris website, and there's a link to that in the description below this video. The first thing I must do is put on my safety glasses and make sure I'm wearing them throughout the experiment. Now the first reaction I'm going to look at is between hydrochloric acid and magnesium. And throughout this experiment, whenever I measure out a liquid, I'm going to use 20 centimeters cubed and measure it with the measuring cylinder. So I'm going to make sure I wash out the measuring cylinder in between measuring out different liquids. So here we go, 20 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid. a little bit too much and I'm going to pour that into the boiling tube and it's important to take the starting temperature of the hydrochloric acid, the first reactant, because what I'm looking for is to see the temperature change. So I'll give it a minute or so to settle and I can see the starting temperature of this hydrochloric acid is 20 degrees C. So I must make sure I write that down in my results table. So there we go, the starting temperature is 20 degrees C. I then add the magnesium to the hydrochloric acid. I'm adding four pieces, each piece is between one and two centimeters long. And then I give it time to react and I watch the thermometer to see what's the highest temperature it records or what is the lowest temperature it records. So we'll come back to that in a minute or so. I've been keeping a close eye on the temperature and it's now stopped increasing any further. So I'm going to write down that final temperature of 31 degrees C into my results table. So the temperature went up to 31 degrees. That means there's been an increase in temperature of 11 degrees. So I'm going to write plus 11. That means it's been giving out heat energy to the surroundings. So that is an example of an exothermic reaction. I'm now going to do my second reaction, which is the one between ammonium chloride and water. So I've remembered to wash out the measuring cylinder after having the acid in, and I've already measured out 20 centimeters cubed of water into the measuring cylinder. I'm now going to pour that into the boiling tube and take the starting temperature of that first reactant, the water, and the starting temperature is once again 20 degrees. So I'll write that down in my results table. 20 degrees is the starting temperature. I'm then going to take out the thermometer just whilst I add the second reactant, the ammonium chloride, and I'm going to add approximately three spatulas of ammonium chloride to the water. 
I'm then going to replace the thermometer and use it to stir the reactants to make sure they all react fully together and also ensure that there's no hot and cold spots in there, that we've got even heating of the reaction mixture. And then I'm going to once again check the thermometer and record the highest or the lowest temperature it gets to. In this case, the temperature has been decreasing and it's now not decreasing any further and it's got down to 12 degrees C. So I'm going to write that down as my final temperature in the results table. So in the second reaction, it went down to 12 degrees and I'm going to write here minus eight degrees because it's decreased by eight degrees this time. So because the temperature's decreased, I know it's an endothermic reaction. So I'm going to repeat the process with the other three reactions I've got left and then we'll have a look at what results I've got. These are the results I've obtained from the other reactions. So with copper sulfate and iron filings, we can see the temperature has increased by six degrees. So that's another exothermic reaction. It's been giving out heat energy to the surroundings. The citric acid and sodium hydrogen carbonate, once again, the temperature's increased, this time by four degrees. So that's another exothermic reaction. And in the final one between water and sodium thiosulfate, the temperature has decreased, this time by five degrees. So in this case, because the temperature's decreased, it's an endothermic reaction. So you should now have a really good understanding of the difference between an endothermic and an exothermic reaction. If you found the video useful, please remember to give it a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching.